and welcome back ladies and gentlemen um, to the third short video lecture on utilizing MPLAS to build your structural models. We're kind of getting close towards the conclusion now. Um, in today's lecture we'll be talking about, literally talking about how do we translate our measurement models into our structural models. And this one will be very short. Um, so before I start let's quickly just have a recap. Um, so first we started with the introduction on M plus in the first episode. In the second episode we looked at um, how do we estimate measurable models and how do we compare them with one another through a CFA approach. And today we are talking about structural models. Now as you know from first year statistics, I guess, um, a structural model is basically a whole bunch of regressions tied together. So it's a bit different than multiple regressions where you're systematically entering things into the equation. Here it is regressions on regressions on regressions. So that's also one of the main benefits of um, structural equation modeling is you don't lose variance. You get a more realistic uh, estimation of relationships uh, given the presence of others, which is a little bit more complicated to do in normal uh, regression analysis. Okay, so. How do we estimate our structural model, our path model? How do we get to these relationships that we so desperately require? So as you can remember, this was our best fitting measurement model estimated in the previous episode um, with a chi-square being 580, CFI, TLI higher than 0 0.93, uh, RMC are bigger than uh, smaller than 0 0.8 it doesn't go past 0 and we'll go through 0 and SRMR is smaller than 0 0.8 so we have to now take this specific model and translate it into our structural model what changed as you can clearly see in terms of how we graphically represent it the only thing that changed was that the covariances between these factors were removed and instead of having a covariance or correlation between these factors it is now a regression a one-way arrow and again this is theory driven so how do we estimate this model in M plus well let's see <clears throat> so a couple of things um, changed but not dramatically so firstly I changed the title it's important because otherwise you will not know what it is the variables stayed the same the missing values stay the same the factors that we use utilizing stayed the same the model command stayed exactly the same as the previous round um, the only thing that we've added was these specific regression paths so we estimated that um, task performance is predicted by happiness and fit so task performance is predicted by happiness and fit right so that is another error because it goes through the model and we have happiness on fit so we have person environment fit predicts happiness um, you can also add that in there but it's just easier for for me to explain to you to mention both of these specific syntaxes to estimate them specifically because then you know what's going on in the background um, sample statistics and everything stays exactly the same so all that we did was we changed the with statements that's estimated automatically by M plus into on statements okay so let's click run and see what happens everything here will stay exactly the same um, interesting enough this is our model fit statistics now let me bring back my original one from my measurement model the best fitting one do you see differences 22037 22037 22370 22370 chi square same uh, rmca 0.5 0.5 uh, tli 2.9.9 0 0.926 0 0.926 so as you can see there is no difference between these two models all right because all that we did was we just changed correlation to regressions 
Now, interesting enough, if you the model, the theoretical model that you specify um, or that you estimate, and if it's a lot different than your data, then this results will be a lot lower, uh, or it will be different for that matter. So the measurement model gives us the best fitting permutation of our model, not indicating direction, but if we change direction, it might, for example, decrease the fit for our second model, our structural model. Okay, so model fits, perfect. The first important step is done. Now what we're more interested in is the relationships, the standardized model results. So what we will be looking at here specifically is the significance of the relationships that we've specified. So here we see task performance predicting happiness and or predicted by happiness and fit. Happiness is significant, but fit is not. Remember in the previous video where I told you to take note of something? Do you remember what that was? Let's take a look. I'm just going to run it again quickly. So if we look at the relationships between the factors, so task with, oh, this is standardized, unstandardized. Uh, significant task with fit it's significant why is that well um, basically in structural equation modeling this controls so this re this regression also controls for the other regression and this gives us an indication of something that's going to happen in our final video about mediation so there is a strong relationship 0 0.5 between happiness and fit there is a strong relationship between happiness and task performance, but in the presence of happiness, right? In the presence of happiness, the relationship between task and fit disappears. Okay, interesting. Um, but this model, still confirmed. This is still what we've tested and this is what we, what we received. So we can also look at the specific intercepts which is not really important for us right now. Um, we can look at the residual variances here. What's very important is that they need to be um, significant. Those are the, the, the specific uh, uh, variances that each item declares. But what we are super, super, super interested in, once we now know the strength of the relationship, the direction and the significance, we want to know the specific variance that is declared by the items, but also of the latent factors into each other. So you will see that person organization fit, need supply, demandability fit, this by itself will stay exactly the same then from your measurement model, the same with meaning and engagement. But now we get two extra variances, the one for happiness. So in other words, how much variance is predicted by person environment fit in happiness. So person environment fit predicts 27% because that is uh, you times it by, by 10 to get the, the variance. 27% of the variance is declared in happiness. Happiness, how much variance does it declare in task performance? 33% of the variance. So that's quite, quite, quite significant. Right? Um, if you, let's go back to our uh, slides and I'll show this to you. So this is basically how you report it. You'd also add the variance in each one of these little um, blocks. I just didn't do that for another reason. So we add the variance also in terms of each of these blocks. So we only indicate the significant loadings, right? And the variance. And this you always report. Your, even in your structural model, you report your model fit. So here is the variances, like I've mentioned, uh, that's very important for our um, model. So how does this then basically work? How do we interpret this? So what we know is that person environment fit predicts happiness and happiness predicts task performance. Um, it is strong relationships, so they're quite big, and they declare a quite a significant amount of variance. 
So how do we interpret this then? Well, when a person is aligned, when the person is aligned to the job, if a creative person is in a creative orientated job like marketing, there's a match between their skills, capabilities, their needs, their demands, they're going to be happier. Makes sense, right? If you can do things that you're already good at, it's gonna make you, in your work, it's gonna make you happier. When a person is experiencing happiness or has high levels of engagement and meaning, they will perform a lot better on their tasks. They might perform better on, uh, on their tasks. So this is basically how we would interpret the structural model. But from what we have here, uh, we can't really say that what happens if a person's uh, high levels of personal environment fit, he will become happier and therefore he will become, he will perform a lot better. We can't say that because we haven't estimated mediation yet. We haven't checked whether or not personal environment fit indirectly affects task performance through happiness. That's something we have to check in, a, uh, in the next step. But at least now we know there are good relationships, strong relationships between our main factors. Now, I want you to do some homework for me. So activity three is I want you to now go and I want you to run this specific model where happiness is now no longer there and we only have meaning and engagement as factors, as individual latent factors on their own. I want you to go and estimate a structural model based on this. So remember, utilize the on statements to have all of the factors relate to one another and the by statements to make up your factors. Now, a no next question is, how does this model then that we've estimated now, how does this differ from our previous model, our other structural model? Um, and kind of then interpret both of the results for you. All right? Okay. So that was a short one. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'll see you in the next one.